Hello, my name is Doug Davison. I'm the president and uh, one of the owners of uh, SmiteWorks, the creators of the Fantasy Grounds Virtual Tabletop. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, some of the new features that we just released in version 3.2 of Fantasy Grounds. This is a major, major overhaul of our system and uh, we've really like drastically changed how things are handled in the back end, how data is presented to people and how you access that information. So uh, I'm going to dive right in and kind of show you some of the new features that you might under, uh, uncover as you explore 3.2. Now I do want to, to throw out one uh, possible caution is that if you have not, uh, if you're just now using 3.2, the update came out on Tuesday. And if you have any custom extensions or community built extensions that you're utilizing with your campaign, those may or may not have been uh, made compatible with this latest version. So what we do is we encourage everyone to uh, turn off all extensions and then to you know go look on the forums and see if there are new versions of those extensions that are compatible with 3.2. If you don't, you may encounter some weird kind of issues. Uh, if that's the case, then just close out your campaign, turn off all your extensions, and then try again with those extensions unloaded and see if you still have the same issues. If you have any further issues, feel free to, to post up on our forums and we'd be happy to help uh, diagnose any sort of issues. Uh, so with, without further ado, I'm going to uh, move my uh, webcam down to the corner here and I'll kind of just go right in and show you some of the new features. So the first feature is that all of the buttons on the side are now uh, dynamic. And so you can modify those by going into your library and what we have is we have all of your standard, uh, any of the modules that you have loaded here, those will show up in the same format as before. You can uh, go into the uh, modules window and now you have this uh, search feature. So you can look for like, oh, I want to look for, if I can spell right, anything that says fifth edition, for instance. Um, and you can see whether you have them open or not. The other thing that you can do that makes it very nice if you have a whole lot of modules like I do is that you can turn on the all or loaded. So this shows just the things that you have loaded and then you can go back to the all mode. Um, and then you have the same functionality as before where you can um, you know, decide whether you want to allow those, allow the players to access it. So here I have the elemental players, uh, companion, elemental evil players companion and the player's handbook deluxe are both allowed for players to open those and access those while, they're, while they are connected. Um, but the buttons, going back to the buttons, you'll see at the top of the screen we have all of these different uh, links to different things. We also have these other uh, what we call playset buttons at the top. So here I've got play loaded right now and that's going to change what's on the side here. If I switch it to GM mode, then this is what I expect that um, I'll want to use whenever I'm building my campaign. So this is this is part of your DM prep uh, stage where you're going in as a dungeon master and then you know you're creating uh, new NPCs and encounters, items, treasure parcels, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, when you're actually playing you may want a more streamlined set of, of uh, options. When you're creating a brand new character or you're in a leveling process go to create PCs and now you'll see that you have PCs, backgrounds, classes, feats, etc. You can also jump right to any of these directly by just clicking on say classes for instance. Um, or if I wanted to add this functionality, so if I wanted to add notes, I could just click the little radio uh, button next to it and I could add, you know, whatever other items that I want to be available, um, you know, as a button on the side. But we think that for the majority of people, you're going to look at the, the GM, the play, the create PC, or the all. I mean, these are all of the buttons. And each of the different rule sets that is built on top of Core RPG will have that new functionality. Some of the community rule sets may not have this functionality yet. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, the, the library changes, the button changes. So um, there are also a number of other changes directly within uh, each of these uh, lists. So for instance, images and maps, I'll pull that up first because it's one of the more simpler ones. So you still have a link to the folder where you can store your stuff. You can go to the store to look for uh, new maps. And you'll see that it has every different uh, map that I have loaded here and it now says page 1 of 18. So this used to have a very large list and depending on how many modules you had loaded that list may take a little while longer to scroll through. Now um, you know you can just kind of page through these results like you would on a web page and it's going to be very very fast. Uh, in addition if I wanted to look for anything that said the word um, you know map on it I could just type in the word map and it narrows it down and shows me only the items that say the word map on those. Uh, additionally, you'll see that some of these 
These, these uh, modules, for instance, are not assigned to a group. These other ones are assigned to a group. So for instance, uh, if I wanted to look at all the Dungeon Master's Guide's maps, um, you know, you can pull those up individually there, or I could select from a drop-down list and pull, you know, just those. So if I want to pull the Book of, uh, get rid of my filter, the Book of Lost Spells, there's all the images there. Here's my D&D map pack with just those items uh, and so forth. Um, Dungeon Master's Guide should show up here as well. Um, and so when you're in, uh, when you create your own maps, they're going to go into a group called none by default and then i'll show you how you can uh, group and organize those later on in the encounter but if you create a new thing and you don't know where it went it probably is in the none group it should also show up under the all group so you can kind of use that to, to filter out what you want to do additionally if you know that like here if i'm looking at um you know say this accursed defiler for instance and i say oh, okay i want to see what other things are just in the tome of beast instead of selecting it from the group here the alternate way of selecting it would be to click on the link here uh, you have one other thing as well, which is um, the ability to share items. So if I wanted that, uh, let's say this abominable beauty, if I wanted to share this, I could share that with the players just like I normally do. And now there's an indicator that, that says that I've shared that and it's now a public image. That ind indicator was there before. But now what you can do if you want to very quickly uh, go back to your all window um, and click on share, this tells me these are all of the items that I have shared across all of my modules. So it makes it very easy to see those. And then if I want to unshare that for some reason, I just click on the link, uh, click on the P and the and it goes away and it's no longer shared with the player. So it will remove that image from the player's screens. So that's kind of the change on some of the list features. You'll see some more in different areas. One area where that happens um, is going to be under the items section. So under the items section, um, looks like I was doing some, some uh, playing around earlier. So under the items, uh, it's going to be very similar. You can go through and you can look at stuff in just one uh, book or resource. So if I only wanted to look at the stuff that's in the player's handbook, that would give me a list of, of all of those items. Um, you can further filter. You can search like you always have, but you can further filter and look by a specific type of item. So if I only want to look at adventuring gear, for instance, or if I only want to look at rods or rings or whatever, I can pull this up. But the nice thing here is that in this particular case, you'll see that I have multiple versions of some of these items. And that's because I have uh, duplicate data that's presented in the uh, SRD content, which is free, and some of that which is included in the Dungeon Master's Guide. So whenever that is the case, normally the Dungeon Master Guide will have a link to an image that you could share, whereas the, um, you know, this is the Rod of Absorption, and it's got a lot of notes here as well. If I look at the Rod of Absorption within the SRD, it has uh, a lot of those same notes, but doesn't have the link to the image, for instance. You can also quickly scan through and see which items are not in the SRD, but are in the uh, magic item, uh, uh, the Dungeon Master's Guide, for instance, as well. Uh, you can also de determine if you want to see uh, templates uh, or not. And a template is something that you would utilize in the Forge. And the Forge is, is still available here, the link where you can, uh, let's clear this out, where you can drag and drop, you know, your items. Um, your magic item templates would go on the right-hand side and your equipment would go on the left, and then you would forge the magic item to create a brand new item. That, again, would add it into your none category until you choose to group it uh, into a, a different location. And we'll come back to this in a minute when I do a quick uh, character build. I'll show you, you know, some other kind of cool stuff you can do with that. Uh, let's see, NPCs. NPCs have some similar functionality where here you've got, um, you know, this, I've got a lot of different books open. And so this kind of shows me all of those together all in one area and sorts them. Uh, and I can look for, you know, stuff by just type, typing here. If I want to look for anything with the word goblin in it, this looks across all of my uh, sources to look for things that have the word goblin. Now, on top of that, there's the type dropdown. And in the type dropdown, I could come through and I could select, uh, you know, different types of creatures. So I could select, for instance, elementals. And this shows me all the elementals in the different books that I have. Um, if I wanted to show, um, for instance, a fey creature, I could pull up the Fae, and now I've got, uh, in the new Dungeons and Dragons Folos Guide to Monsters, I have an Anis Hag. And see that the Anis Hag has all of the information for that with the link to the image. 
Uh, and then I can also see here, okay, well, this Anna's Hag is a CR6. So if I had that in an encounter and I wanted to change things up for my own encounter, but I still wanted to have a Fey creature, then I could just do a combination of uh, the type Fey, and then I could say, okay, I want to look for other CR6 uh, Fey. So here I've got a Mirror Hag. I could switch it out with that, for instance. This comes from the Tome of Beast. Or I could add um, a Red Cap. Now the instance of the Red Cap, this is, this is kind of interesting, but I switch back to uh, not filtering on the CR. I could do a quick search on Red Cap, and you'll see that, that there is a Red Cap that is from the Volo's Guide to Monsters, and then there's a third-party version of a Red Cap as well. And so those will now look different. So they'll both show up, but this um, group, listing column over on the side tells you exactly which one is which. So here I can see the differences um, between their stats. One of them is a CR3, uh, and then this one over here is a CR6. And so they both have images, and this is the uh, one from the Bolo's Guide. And then here, this is the one from uh, the Tome of Beast. So you can choose which one you want to have in your campaign. Okay, uh, let's see. Let me clear this out again real quick. Um, and again, you can filter on the groups here. Only you want to pull up monster manual stuff, you could you could filter that way. So let's see. After the NPCs, we have uh, this is a new edition now where you can just pull up the spells across the board. So the best way to get to those is to go to your library and then scroll down and look for spells, for instance. Or if you're going to create PCs, it shows up on the right as well. So under the spells section. Um, you've got your standard grouping as before, and you also have uh, a level sort. So if I want to see only level 2 spells, here I've got a list of my level 2 spells. And I also can change the source to say I only want to see, uh, for instance, uh, ranger spells. And so now you can say show me all the level 2 ranger spells. And in this particular case, I've got the player's handbook deluxe. And I also have the SRD5 uh, data. So there's going to be some redundancy there. But then I've uh, further gone and added the um, Book of Lost Spells, which is a third-party product that has some, some additional spells in there. Uh, so one of the things that's really kind of neat here is, um, let me clear this out real quick. I've created a new spell. If you want to create a new one, you can actually create it directly here. And this is one of the very often requested functionalities and features here. So if you have any other, you know, custom homebrew stuff, you can come through and you can say, okay, I want to do a, a blood blade, for instance. Then you can come through and fill out all the information, put the level, maybe make it level two, conjuration, fill out all of this information like you normally would. So I'm going to move it off to the side. I'll show you one that I've already created, which happens to be called a... Um, Black Blade of Doom, I believe. And you'll see here it goes into a group that says uh, none for now. So I can pull this up and I can unlock it, edit it, and you'll see that um, whatever you put in here, let me just grab this. If I copied the same stuff, I could go down, drop it in, you know, put in a duration, whatever, concentration. And then when you're done, you just lock it, and now you have uh, multiple blades. So I've got the Black Blade of Doom, and then I have this Blood Blade that I just created. Those will now show up uh, in the order, and I can use those on characters, and characters can use those to create stuff. Um, if you wanted to group those in a different way, you could also assign it to a group. So here I could add a, drop it into a, a bucket, for instance. But uh, all of these things will automatically pick it up. So for instance, the, um, where is it? The Black Blade of Doom is a conjuration. Uh, and it is set to a cleric spell. So if I actually went to the source cleric, now my custom spell shows up as an available cleric spell. So you can add whatever you want uh, very easily here. Also, uh, I mentioned that you can do some editing. So let me show you what that looks like. So here's Blade Barrier. So let's say that you wanted a different version of, of a spell that's there. You could base it off of an existing spell. So you notice that you can't unlock that. It says it's read only. That's because this comes from the actual player's handbook. But what you can do is you can drag it back into here. And now I've got uh, two versions of Blade Barrier. Do a search here. Blade Barrier. And you'll see that there's the Actually, there's three versions. There's the player's handbook version, the SRD version, and now this new version. I can open up the new version and I can edit it and I can make it whatever I want. Um, and I can call it Blade, Blair, Blade Barrier of Doom. Just throw of Doom on anything and it makes it that much better. So I probably want that to be a level 7 version because, you know, it's very doomy. And there you go. 
and that's all you have to do to make your own spells. Um, so let's see, after spells we have uh, feats. So feats here show up. Uh, this is just a very simplified list, but it, it does allow you again to pull stuff from a, a number of different sources. Um, then same thing with backgrounds um, as well. Backgrounds show up across all sources that you have loaded. And I'm going to show you a real quick character creation here at the very end of the video. So stay tuned and I'll show you how easy it is uh, to make characters now. Uh, okay, next up we have encounters. So encounters, you can go right into the encounters here or those are normally when you're in GM mode, you're creating your own stuff. Uh, so that would be a place where you could go into encounter. So encounters, um, we have a new feature which is called, um, go back to the all here, these show all the encounters from the different uh, things that I have. So in this case I have uh, Princes of the Apocalypse and I've got it broken down by chapter, chapter 2, chapter 3, whatever. And the encounter looks pretty much the same as what it did before. So it's got the CR, the XP, the number appearing, if there's any uh, tokens assigned, these are the NPCs, and these are pre-placed on the map evidently because of the check mark. So we have a new function called uh, random encounters. So if you click on random, this opens up a list of random encounters. And the only uh, place that we're really utilizing this right now is within the Volo's Guide to Monsters. But I'll use that as an example to, to just kind of show you what one might look like. So I'm gonna dive right into the Beholder uh, Lesser Minions Goblins. And in this particular case, you'll see that um, there are 10d10 plus 50 goblins appearing and 3d4 goblin bosses. So, um, you know, here's those generic goblins and then there's the goblin bosses. So now if I click on this button here, it's going to generate a brand new encounter. It's going to create the encounter and tell me how many are appearing. So I click the button and now I have 117 goblins and seven goblin bosses. And it calculated the CR, CR12 and, and the uh, experience for me automatically. So if you were to create your own, um, and I uh, have one example of, of maybe an Avalith that I used before that I'll reuse. So come through here, do the add item. Let's call it an Avalith party. And uh, you see I already did this once before. Uh, but then all you need to do, I'll close all these down. I just need to grab some NPCs. So let's grab an Avalith from the monster manual, drop him in. I only ever want there to be one Avalith, uh, but let's give him some minions. So how about some Grimlocks? That would seem like they might hang out with an Avalith. And let's say there's going to be 2d6 of those. And let's give him something a little bit more exciting. How about an Etten? And let's grab the Etten from here and we'll say there's maybe 1d3 uh, Ettens. Uh, so now that I've created those, I can lock, the, lock this down and hit Generate Encounter. And now it generated two Ettons, nine Grimlocks, and the one Avalith. And you're ready to go. If you drop this into the combat, it'll automatically treat it just like any other encounter from there. And if you don't like the numbers that are appearing, you can always just unlock it. And you can say, okay, well, really nine's a little bit crazy. So I'm going to drop that back down to five, recalculate the CR, and you're good to go. So that's the uh, random encounters edition. Next we have... Um, a story. Actually, I'm going to take a break for a second here, and I'm just going to show you how you can how you can group your own stuff. So, under the encounters, um, as I mentioned before, we have the group called None. So these are the two encounters that I just created. Um, I could have other encounters that I want from different areas, but let's add a new section. And so what I did is I clicked on the drop down, and I changed the uh, I clicked the edit groups button. And now I've got this little plus button. So I can come through, I can rename these. If I don't like the way these are named, I can make them whatever I want. Or I can come through and add a brand new one and it starts creating a group one entry. So instead of group one, I'm gonna call it my, um, uh, let's see, Abolith of Doom Adventure, because of course it's got of doom. I'll hit enter and it adds that as a new group. So now there's a new group called Abolith of Doom. So now that that's available, I can just drag Abolith, both of my encounters to that, and now they're in that group. So um, makes it really pretty easy. We probably are going to make a few little edits here. We're continuing to refine this. We, we might make it so if I create a brand new encounter now, um, let's call it a Frogamoth, Froghemoth, 
frog hemoth. Yeah, that's probably how it's pronounced. So let's make a frog hemoth, and let's say I was going to add some creatures to this. You notice that it didn't automatically drop in here. That's again because it went into this none group. So here I'd have to go back up and then drag it over. So we're going to work on maybe fine-tuning that just a little bit here in a future update. Maybe 3.2.1 might address that. Um, but play around with it. Let us know what you think. Um, you know, it gives you lots of flexibility to, to kind of build your own groups and to organize stuff. Uh, the, the other thing I recommend doing is making this um, wider, but uh, make it a little bit deep as well um, so that you've got room for these drop downs to fill and to still have uh, visibility of, of the list below that. Okay, so that's encounters. The next thing that we have up are stories and story templates. So um, stories, to get to the story templates, if you click on the link here, you'll notice that there is a story entry, but there's not a story template. That's similar to the random encounters in that the only way to get to the story templates is to start off into the story area. You can click it here or there, and then look for the template button. Just like with encounters, you had to go into the encounters and then random to get to the random encounters. Um, so there's just some functionality that's very tightly linked with one area, and so you have to go into that area to, to then expand. That's just because we didn't want a proliferation of too too many buttons to, to start popping up everywhere. Uh, so uh, you've got your normal story stuff like, like before, but now you have this templates button. And so what is a story template? So a story template is essentially a way to generate randomized story content. And off, a lot of times that will be driven by stuff that's in random tables that you've created. So um, there's a ton and ton of random tables in the Dungeon Master's Guide. There's a ton of them in um, some of the third party stuff that we have and also in like the Volo's Guide to Monsters. So I want to showcase one of those, which is a beholder template that comes in the Volo's Guide to Monsters. So if I click this, you'll see that it has all of this stuff. It looks very similar to a regular story but it's got some other stuff going on here. So what this is going to do is this is going to dynamically generate a story entry with a bunch of descriptive text for a beholder. And so you'll see there's some chat windows and some other stuff. But this, um, if I scroll up to the top here, you'll see that it has a name and it's gonna roll 1d3 times on the beholder names table. If I actually open up my tables and look for, I'm just gonna do a search for beholder. So here's a lot of tables with different stuff uh, for beholders. And my image is in the way here. So under the names, if I scroll down to beholder names, you'll see that it's got a bunch of different names here, 20 different names uh, that a beholder might have. So this is gonna roll on this table three times and then just kind of put them all in order. Now down below here, there's a beholder body diameter section. And it similarly will have a bracketed table name that says beholder body diameter diameter. So if I scroll up to the beholder body diameter, you'll see that they can be anything from four feet wide to six feet wide, and they have different random, you know, uh, assignments, which make some of them more uh, or more common than others, for, for instance. If I roll this table, normally it'll just roll it out to chat and, and disclose it. But in this particular case, it's going to roll that and then stick it in the text. So uh, I'm just going to show you what that looks like. Let me move these dice out of the way so you can see there is a generate button at the bottom. Um, maybe shrink it up a little bit. So if I scroll through here, if I click generate, it is actually going to create a brand new story. And this one's name is just Velx, Vexler or Velxer. If I was to roll again, see if it gives me a different one. Zio, each of these is getting only a single entry. There we go. Finally, I got one that had multiple names. So on the 1D3, it said, okay, well, now I'm going to roll three times on that chart, and now I've got three names. So I've just very quickly created three different beholders, which will all be different from each other. So let me uh, hide all these and show you what that looks like uh, kind of side by side. Get rid of all this stuff for a sec. So uh, here's beholder one, here's beholder two, and here's beholder uh, three. Actually, I did four, I guess. So if I expand this guy out, you'll see that all of these were just static links. So those all appeared no matter which um, template I generated. But you'll see here that they are different sizes. This one's only five feet wide. These two are both five and a half feet wide. This one's green. This one's pinkish. This one's um, green as well. This one has uh, thick and pointed teeth. And this one has human-like teeth. Uh, on top of that, if I scroll through here, you'll see that um, I was able to dynamically generate, uh, let's see, 
Let's make that up here. I was able to dynamically generate what each one of the eyes looked like for this particular beholder. And then below that, I also have the personality, uh, ideals and bonds, the flaws, and I also have links to the minions that work for this particular beholder. And those have all been randomized. And so if I scroll down here and see this one, um, you'll see that it has different minions. This one has orcs and orc war chiefs working for it. If I open that up, it's going to be a random encounter, our new random encounter feature. Uh, and then it has some trolls. This is also a random encounter. Uh, and chimeras, uh, two sets of chimeras, basically. This one has some fire giants uh, and, some, and a roper that works for it. Also, because uh, the story templates allow you to do everything that you could do in a regular story, you can uh, put box text here. And this, this particular case actually built something that I could share with the players that is now uh, combines all of this information I've already rolled and puts it into a nice paragraph format. So here I say, Nagash Femex Barixis is a five and a half foot wide beholder with a warty green skin, a normal sized and shaped mouth featuring human like teeth around the edge of the eye. So you can really kind of mix and match and combine these things and make them your own. You can furthermore, you can edit any of the templates that we have right now and then just kind of, um, you know, expand upon them if, if you want and, and just really, you know, do all sorts of kind of crazy stuff with it. So um, this particular case, one of the things uh, that I didn't disclose is that you see here it rolled randomly for the name and then later on it it referred back to that same name so there's an idea that you could refer stuff so if I go back into my stories and my templates under the beholder template you'll see that I use the square brackets up here and that tells it to roll against the table uh, down below I actually add the angled brackets and what that does is it's going when it rolls for the square brackets up here it's going to uh, generate what those return values are and then immediately it's going to go back and look and say did you have any angle brackets below and if so then just you know take that value that I already rolled and put it in there. Some of the other stuff that you can do is um, you can use dice you can add a dice roll in brackets and it will roll the result of that dice. You can also um, you can also specify that you want to roll on just one column in a table. If there's a, a table that has six columns and you only want to roll on column four, for instance, you can you can put comma four and it will roll it uh, in, that, in that way. So I'm going to show real quick a few other really interesting uh, sort of things that we have. So here we have, we just added this to the DMG because it's uh, one of the modules that we went, we went back and really kind of utilized this functionality. So here's an example of you can do a dungeon ad adventure framework. Let me just show you all the ones in the DMG. So um, you can go in and do a, um, let's see, here's a dungeon adventure framework which has, let me move my dice back out of the way, has some different things that, that you can look up. Um, if I hit generate, it very quickly tells me, uh, gives me, you know, some stuff that I can use as a DM to help kind of, uh, you know, give me some good ideas on how I can create a dungeon adventure. In this particular case, uh, the goal is to destroy a magical threat inside of a dungeon that is in a chasm uh, that was once created by mind flayers uh, as a planar gate. And uh, the creators, the mind flayers, were at one point destroyed by attacking raiders. Now there's a beast or monstrosity that is currently living in there that you that the players will have to deal with and uh, that beast is focused on mayhem and uh, wants to enact the vengeful will of a god or patron uh, it does so by stalking people uh, but a special weapon uh, that is out there can deal extra damage to it when used against this creature um, and then so it just gives you tons and tons of stuff so i, I love all of that content it was already there it was already in the dungeon master's guide it was in all of these random tables uh, but this really just kind of boils it all down for you, allows you to, to you know, really combine all of that power and functionality to very quickly spit out uh, several different ideas. And then you can just throw away the ones that you don't want and then uh, modify and further expand upon the ones that you do like. So uh, that was an example. Here's an event-based version of the same thing, which is, you know, got some of the same sort of stuff. But you'll see here, um, you know, it's got some important NPCs that you can then choose from. You can fill in the blank in a few other areas, um, and, and you can have random dice rolls dropped in there too, if that makes a difference for you. Um, here's one that is a, a random settlement is very nice. So random settlement has um, 
a box text at the top that now tells me the settlement's known for its delicious cuisine and river and a river divides the town. So uh, you've got that, you've got what the race relations are, the ruler status, uh, here's some notable buildings that you might encounter. And you could further expand this. If you happen to have just a, a whole ton of different images for different buildings, instead of it just saying tavern, you could actually have links to different types of taverns with different maps and images of, of uh, floor plans that you wanted. And you could really make a completely random town generator that you could refer back to in your, in your encounters, in your adventures. So the random settlement's a great one. The urban chase planner, I think, uh, could really have a lot of fun. This one um, was kind of one that we just threw in because we thought it could be kind of fun. So here's where you can have maybe eight different participants in a race. What I would recommend doing is maybe just have like your combat tracker loaded up um, and then just go in initiative order and apply what happens each round to each person. And so this looks at the Dungeon Master Guide has an urban chase complications table and it just looks and sees if there's a complication for everybody that's in a race where there may be uh, the bad guys are trying to escape and the players are chasing them down and you don't want to go into turn order because that's kind of uh, boring when people say okay they ran off now what happens and then you know uh, everybody moves 30 feet per round or whatever and then it you know it makes it impossible to really have really an exciting chase so this is uh, meant to kind of spice that up a little bit uh, same thing if the players are trying to escape and, and bad guys are chasing after them. So here, you know, for instance, okay, participant one, uh, participants four, five, six, and seven didn't have any issues at all along with participant two. But participant one, uh, as they were trying to, you know, make their way, uh, either running away or chasing after someone, got blocked by a crowd. So now it says make a DC 10 strength check uh, or dexterity acrobatics check your choice to make your way through the crowd. Otherwise, if you fail, the crowd counts as 10 feet of difficult terrain. So then you've fallen behind in that particular race. Here's another example where a pack of dogs is fighting over food right where you're trying to run through. And so you have to dodge around them or you take some damage as they're, as they bite you and they slow you down a little bit as, as you're trying to run. So, you know, this sort of thing, I think uh, just really, really fun and, and be interesting to see what sort of stuff you guys create. And if you guys create some really, really cool stuff, uh, you know, I'd recommend throwing it up on the DMs Guild, and and uh, I think other DMs could really benefit from some of that creativity. Okay, so that's uh, story templates, and um, you know, look on the wiki, look in the user manual. There's a lot more information and some examples that kind of walk you through there. We've updated that. Um, let's move along to the next thing, which is uh, formatted dice. Uh, I'm not sorry, not formatted dice, uh, manual dice. And so manual dice is a new option that we just turned on to really promote play at the table. So here, the very first option under your uh, campaign options is now dice manual entry. So you can turn that on. And what that basically will do is it will prompt you whenever you do uh, an action that would have rolled dice before. And it will allow you to either continue to let Fantasy Grounds roll the dice for you, or it will... Um, basically um, allow you to roll the dice on the table, tell you what the values were, and then and then go from there. So I'm just going to show you very quickly with an NPC. Let's take, um, I'll take a dragon, for instance. So a dragon, if he was going to attack someone, and actually let me have, um, I'm going to throw them into, here you go, adult black dragon, and uh, versus a yeah, versus an avatar of death. Sounds good. Okay, so let's say these two are fighting. I'll make one of them uh, a neutral faction or friendly. Maybe it's a friendly black dragon. I don't know why, but it is. So if I, as a DM, wanted to do an attack roll, normally I would just uh, say, okay, we'll do the attack plus 11 against the avatar of death. But now what's going to happen is it's going to bring up this little manual dice entry window. And on that window, it says, okay, I'm expecting the result of a D20. Tell me what, what it's going to be. So I would roll the D20 um, and then, you know, maybe show it to the camera if I wanted to do that. Whatever the case, okay, I rolled an 8. And now if I hit check, then it'll still calculate and tell me whether I hit or I missed against the target. So you still get the automation, the benefit of the automation. Uh, but it allows you to put in your own values. If I had actually hit, then what I could do is just say, okay, well, I want to go over to the damage, and it's going to be 2d6 plus 6 slashing. Um, let me actually pretend it was a bite because that's a little bit more interesting. Well, I'll show you the slashing first. So slashing comes up, and it says, okay, I'm, I'm expecting 2d6 roll. So, okay, you got a 4 and you got a 5, or a 4 and a 3. So here it would apply that damage, for instance. Um, 
Oh, the guy doesn't have much hit points. Um, the other thing that you could do is um, if you don't want to roll both dice, oh, sorry, um, drag it back up here. If you don't want to roll and plug in every single dice value, then just let your players roll like they're 2d6 and they say, okay, well, I got a, a, an 11, for instance. Just type it into the first field and then hit the checkbox. And, and that'll have the same effect. Where that might come into play, where you really want to pay attention is in a, in a situation where it does multiple types of damage. So for instance, here I'm doing 2D, 2d10 plus 6 piercing plus 1d8 acid. And so maybe the creature has um, some protection against acid, but not to the piercing or vice versa. So here the 2d10, I could say, okay, well, what did you get on the 2d10? Then your player would say, okay, well, I did um, say 14 points of, of uh, piercing and I did three points of acid. So just skip the other d10. I mean, you could put in each individual die roll if you want, uh, but I think that's just going to be a faster way to kind of get, get to the result you want. Uh, the other thing that you can do is if you're rolling, let's, let's grab something bigger here. How about, I guess it's all fine. I'll drop that on here. So if you don't want to put in the rolls at all, or if you just want to continue using um, the random roll just click on the roll button and it'll roll like normal so that way if you have players that want to roll their own dice but you want to just have fancy rounds to it you can get the best of both worlds with that option okay um so that's the manual dice rolls and then when you're done just turn it off and you're back to it automatically rolling um you know normal normal damage let's see okay so next i'm going to do a real quick character creation and show you what that looks like now so Again, you got the GM, the play, and you have this create PC option. So this is what I would recommend. So you go to PCs, let's create, let's just create two real quick characters here. And I'm going to do them both at the same time. Okay, so uh, character one, and character two. So let's say I'm going to have Rataban, and I'm going to make Rataban, I'm going to grab a Let's see, how about a Goliath? Sounds good. Uh, and then here I'm going to do Sorna, and let's make her just like um, maybe like a druid or something like that. Let's see, I think I've got some here that looks good. All right, so I'm going to make her like an elf druid. And so I'm going to go through, you would roll your dice or set your stats like you normally would. So since he's a um, Goliath, let's make him like a fighter. Let's say he's, just throw some values in here for now. Uh, probably switch these, 13, 12, okay. And then she's going to have a uh, druid, so she's going to maybe be higher on her wisdom. And uh, let's see, 15, 14, 13, 12, okay. And so let's go grab uh, the race next. So under races, move my picture out of the way here. I'm going to grab an elf. So let's grab an elf. And you'll see I type in the first couple characters and it pulls it up. You can grab the elf from any of those sources. I'm going to grab it from the player's handbook. Drop it here and it asks me which type of elf I want. Let's make her a wood elf. Click on the link to, to read up about that if you want. So let's make her a wood elf, and you'll see over the side it's going to add all of her abilities, just like it used to before. Let's make him a Goliath, and here I've got two versions. I've got the Elemental Evil Player's Companion version and the one from Volo's Guide. So I'll use the Volo's Guide option, make him a Goliath, um, and he's good to go there. Uh, now I'm going to go to Classes, and let's see, I want to make him just a standard fighter. Grab a fighter, drop it in. And I'll give him acrobatics and athletics for his skills. And for her, I'm going to make her a, oops, make her a druid. Okay. And I'm going to give her maybe nature and perception. Okay. So that's all pretty much kind of how it was before with the only difference being you know, these things were a little bit easier to jump right to because the buttons are all there that I'm building. Uh, backgrounds. Yeah, let's grab some backgrounds too. So let's say, um, what kind of, she'll be a hermit and he will be a far traveler. But the nice thing is that you now have all of them visible 
you know, on one screen and you can search. It makes it a lot faster to kind of build characters in general. Okay, so now here's where we start to get a, a little bit different uh, with what we can do. So you'll notice here that their AC is 12 for Radaban and 13 for Sorna. So let's give them some armor. And in the past, what you had to do is you had to click into here and set these values when you did that. So now we've, we've done that for you. And now I can go right into the items. I can pull up a type, armor, and let's grab, let's say hide armor. Let's give her hide. And I'm going to give her a uh, hide armor of acid resistance. Drop that in there. And then for him, he's going to get a, um, I don't know, maybe a chain shirt. All right, let's give him chain mail. All right, so I'll give him chain mail. And now, uh, close that back down. You'll see that there's this indicator here. It says equipped. By default, it's going to assume that you want to equip that. And uh, what that's going to do when it's equipped is in addition to it, you know, and totaling it for your encumbrance down here on the main tab. Now, if I go back to the main tab for each, you'll see that her AC is now a 14 and his is a 16. If I expand that out, it's, it has now set the six armor proficiency for me automatically. Um, for hers here, you'll see that I've got, got that in there. Um, and here it automatically knew that she does get a dex bonus, but with a max of two for the specific item. Uh, let's see. So let's go back in. Let's give them both a shield and a weapon. And so let's go to here. I'm going to type in, uh, it's an armor shield, and I'm just going to give him a regular shield. And I'm going to give her, because she's special for some reason, I'm going to give her a um, plus one shield. All right. And then I'm going to give them both some weapons. So let's give, um, let's see, staff oops I have to change it from armor down to weapons let's do a quick quarter staff yeah she's got all kinds of magic items for some reason it's going to be marked as carried um, over here he's going to have a battle axe just grab a regular battle axe and I'm going to give him um, maybe a couple javelins just drop a javelin in here and you're all set. So uh, he's going to be not equipped with the javelin, but he's going to mark it as, you'll see it here if I change it to carried or not carried. If I put it as carried, then it will show up in my actions tab. So if I go to actions, you'll see that, uh, oops, let's see. Javelin, let's make two of these. There we go. Okay, so under the actions, here you'll see I've got those still show up, but my battle axe is the one that's actually carried. Um, if I go to my main tab, you'll see my armor class is now at 18, and it adjusted my shield. Her armor class is now um, a 17, and here is her quarter staff with the damage that it's going to do. So if I go in, if I wanted to, uh, maybe I don't have my javelins maybe I left them on my horse if I turn them off then they um, they should be disappearing from here let's see preparation there we go combat so now they don't show up at all um, but they do show up under the standard tab or under the preparation tab you can also change it here if I want to say okay I want to mark it as carried so you don't have to go back to the inventory you can you can do it directly here but then when you're in combat they won't show up unless they're uh, marked as equipped so you can toggle that and then they'll show up. Okay, so that's uh, the changes to character creation. So I know I've talked for a long time, it's 43 minutes into the video, so I'll probably just wrap it up here. Um, but we hope to see you know, your comments on the, on the forums. You know, what do you like? What do you still want us to do? What are some other things that we can do to continually improve Fantasy Grounds and make it um, you know, easier for, for what you need? So thanks again. I hope you've enjoyed the video and, uh, you know, thanks for your patience and waiting for us to get 3.2 out. It's a big, big change and uh, we hope you like it. Take care.